In my last video, we toured a factory that produces insulated concrete forms or ICF blocks. We went over the manufacturing process of the block and the chemical and physical changes it goes through. I'll link that video up here. Today, we're going to look into how an ICF wall is built with Fox blocks, as well as the pros and cons of this type of construction. I've got these cute miniature Fox blocks to demonstrate the wall assembly. All Fox blocks are made of molded polypropylene plastic ties, which secures two pieces of expanded polystyrene foam that are two and five eighths of an inch thick. The distance between them can vary from four inches to 12 inches. The blocks have teeth, so they interlock on the next block like Legos. The blocks should be staggered in a running bond method to avoid continuous seams. Horizontal rebar sits inside the ties to strengthen the wall assembly. Concrete is poured inside the sandwich and vibrated. Fox Blocks has a variety of products. Straight blocks make up 80% of ICF wall assemblies on most residential and commercial jobs. Corner blocks have corner brackets designed to add more strength and support to eliminate blowouts during the concrete pour. T blocks are used where two walls intersect, like an exterior wall to an interior wall. 45 degree angle blocks provide more design options. They also have a corner bracket to reinforce the vulnerable edge. Radius blocks are 16 inch long specialty blocks used to build curved walls. They have to be specially ordered. Taper top blocks are used at the top of the wall where the width of the concrete core needs to be increased to support other lateral loads like exterior roof truss loads, interior floor joist loads, etc. Curb blocks can create a ledge to support different flow systems like hollow core, precast concrete, engineered wood floors, garage slabs, etc. Brick ledge blocks are used at the top of the wall to support other adjacent lateral loads. After concrete is poured, it can support a 25 foot tall masonry wall. So, how do you build ICF walls? After excavating the site, the concrete footing is poured along the perimeter walls with rebar sticking out of them. You must make sure that these footers are perfectly leveled. Next, the corner blocks are placed to define the edges. Straight blocks are then placed in a running bond staggered layout towards the center of the wall. Rebar or reinforcing steel bars snap into the polypropylene ties of every single ICF block. Any open seams must be sealed with foam and tape. The walls are constantly checked to make sure they are level and plumb. After all the blocks are stacked, the wall is braced on one side. Next, the concrete must be properly prepared because it is a vital part of this wall. The concrete in ICF walls must have a slump of 5 to 6 inches, which is higher than the slump for a floor, which may be at 3 inches. The proper slump allows the concrete to be pumped and to flow more efficiently. A lower slump can create voids and honeycombs in the walls, which can create more hydrostatic pressure and damage the blocks. The aggregate must be between 3 eighths of an inch to 3 quarters of an inch. Using larger aggregate, may cause congestion between the form wall and the reinforcement, resulting in voids. The 28-day compressive strength of concrete must be at least 2,500 psi, but preferably higher, 3,000 to 4,000 psi, because this can help the flowability and pumpability of concrete. The concrete is poured in 1 foot to 4 foot increments to manage the concrete pressure and reduce the risk of blowouts. <laughs> Now let's discuss all the advantages of ICF wall construction. The most obvious one is the strength of the wall compared to wood or stick building. ICF homes are permanent structures that will stand for a hundred years or more. They will withstand hurricanes and tornadoes, so they are great in Texas and Oklahoma. The only thing that might get damaged is your wooden roof. They can also withstand floods because EPS and concrete are water resistant. So they are popular in coastal areas. The only thing that you would need to replace is the drywall inside your home. They are also fire resistant to a certain degree. So they are great in areas like California. They have a four hour fire rating compared to wood framed homes that can collapse in under an hour. This photo was taken in San Diego. The three homes left standing were built with ICFs. Another advantage is their air tightness provided you use good quality doors, windows, and a roof. The continuous interior and exterior insulation 
also prevents mixing of cold and warm air, thus reducing condensation and mold. Air changes per hour or ACH is a measure of how many times air within a space is replaced in one hour. ICF homes with a wooden roof have 1 to 1.5 ACH compared to wooden homes which have 5 to 12 ACH. So an ICF home has less air leaking out through the walls so you can downsize your air conditioning system and you'll see a reduction in your energy bills. Home Energy Rating System or HERS Index is a way to measure efficiency of a home. Typical homes have a score of about 130, but ICF homes typically score in the 30 to 50 range. Low sound transmission is another advantage. An ICF home with a 6-inch concrete core has an STC rating of 50 to 55, compared to an insulated 2x4 wooden wall, which has an STC rating of 40. Fox Blocks markets their wall as a 6-in-1 assembly. The EPS foam acts as a natural vapor barrier and provides continuous double layer insulation. The solid concrete core acts as an air barrier. The polypropylene ties have inbuilt rebar support and also acts as fastening of furring strips for any finish like drywall, hardy board, brick, vinyl siding, etc. Finally, their reversible interlocking design saves construction time and reduces waste. This 6 in 1 property equates to faster wall construction fewer trades out on the job site, and less room for errors. They are a great DIY wall assembly. Even if you contract out the pouring of the concrete, you can still stack all these blocks yourself to reduce costs. The average cost of an ICF wall is around $15 per square foot, but you can bring it down to $10 per square foot if you stack these yourself. ICF walls also have a pretty good R value, which is a measure of how well it resists the conductive flow of heat. Concrete itself has no R value, just thermal mass. So every ICF wall, whether it's 4 inches or 12 inches, is around an R22 wall. If you consider the thermal mass of 6 inch concrete, the wall performs more like an R50 wall. ICF wall construction is very versatile, which surprised me. I thought it would have some height restraints, but you can build multi-story residential buildings with these blocks. They can also be used on slab on grade or pier and beam homes to build walls from the basement up to the roof. You can also use all sorts of exterior finishes on these blocks. One big advantage of Fox blocks is that they use full height ties so that when you stack the blocks, the ties are sitting on top of each other, not just foam sitting on foam. Your wall isn't going to compress once concrete is poured it is going to maintain the correct height. For those of you interested in 3D modeling your home, Foxplux has an extensive BIM library where you can assemble your complete home and generate cut sheets and specs. So that's a lot of advantages over other construction assemblies, but let's go over some of the disadvantages. It is more expensive than wood construction in the States. It's a great alternative to CMU block walls in countries where Pine trees aren't native. ICF walls are also not as good in cold climates where you need a higher R value. Waterproofing is a little bit of a concern. The manufacturers claim that you only have to waterproof the underground portion of the wall. But most construction companies are concerned with water penetration at the seams between the blocks and the areas around window and door openings. So they use an additional peel and stick membrane over the entire building, which is expensive. Running electrical and water lines through the house and even installing electrical boxes in your walls requires you to melt and cut out EPS foam or even the ties, which is disruptive. If you have conduit larger than 2 and 5 eighths of an inch, it will stick out of the wall, so you'd need to fur out or build out the wall to hide it. Another disadvantage is that concrete releases a lot of heat and moisture during the curing process, which can last a whole year. ICF homes can have humidity issues if they aren't properly ventilated. The walls also occupy a lot of space. A 6-inch wall is actually more like 11 inches, so this can eat into your interior space. Sustainability could be another concern. Concrete has a massive carbon footprint, and it's pretty destructive to the environment. But you also need to compare the lifespan of a poorly built wood-framed home 
to the 100 plus year lifespan of an ICF home. Remodeling the exterior walls of an ICF home is nearly impossible. You'll have to jackhammer through the concrete to modify it. You also can't have your typical beer guzzling lazy builders on site with an ICF home. It has to be planned out carefully if you want to avoid routing through all the EPS foam to run cables. Wood construction is more forgiving because you can hide your mistakes. Considering all the pros and cons of ICF walls, I have to admit that I'm a huge fan of this type of construction and I'd seriously consider building an ICF home in Dallas if and when I buy the land. Wood just keeps increasing in price and the quality of these finger jointed pine wood that developers are using nowadays just to lower costs is pitiful. Construction codes also keep getting stricter. I expect them to require R30 walls even in Texas very soon and old school fiberglass insulation just isn't going to cut it. I think homeowners are slowly going to demand better built homes because of all the information that's available on the internet. Right now, people are concerned with their interior finishes like the type of granite used, shiplap walls and hardwood floors. They don't realize that the bones of your building should take precedence over the stuff that you fill your home with. I can see ICF homes becoming more popular, especially with custom builds. Hope you enjoyed that video. Leave me a comment below if you have any personal experience building an ICF home. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.